my mama and my cousin Tasha. Hey. And we are still talking about just. I would say this would be maybe the disguise is off, and you like okay, this is you know because he ain't nothing. <laughs> I said it off camera. I'm like he wasn't nothing. He was an old something little. This is, this is, I'm put. I'm a, I'm a type in cuss words on the bottom probably with the casita thing. But okay. we're just into they went from one state now they're in Louisiana, and you know what are they doing in Louisiana? Ty? Right, so you know he has the uh, nightclub gig that he's working. Um, so when I find he had done that for maybe a couple of months before you know moving mm-hmm. down. So when we were preparing to move down, um, he did come home to help pack up the house, but he only packed up his stuff. You know he didn't pack up our stuff, not like the household stuff. You know, um, so that should have been a sign for me too. You know because he was only packing up his stuff. So um, when it came time for the movers. Uh, to come to move us um, because we did pods because the um, apartments that we were going to be staying at um, it wouldn't it wouldn't have been available for us for a couple of months so we moved in March the apartment wouldn't have been available until May oh wow okay so um, we had to put everything in storage and so instead of putting it in storage storage we did the pods because the pods would bring it to where you're going you know when you when it's time and so um, once I made sure that the movers got there and that, you know, everything was okay. I left and went to work. So I get home. He, he, uh, I can't remember if he called me or texted me. He was like, yeah, um, the truck wasn't big enough. The, the unit wasn't big enough. So we, you know, gonna have to figure out how we're going to get the rest of the stuff out of the house. So the majority of the stuff that was in the pile was his stuff. <laughs> okay. So yeah. Yes. So uh, everything else was just like left out. And so he was yeah, saying nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and so, um, you know, the, the, the people who were renting that we were renting from, uh, they were like really nice, you know, and they were working with us to get, you know, have time to get mm-hmm, the stuff out mm-hmm. of the house or whatever. And so, um, he was saying to me, well, you know, I got to go to work, so I'm not going to be able to stay here another day. So you just see if, you know, we just come next weekend. I'm like, no. They have people who want the house. To come in. Yeah. They, yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that, you know. And he's like, all you got to do is just ask him. I'm like, well, why don't you call him and ask you him in? Him. Why don't you call him and ask him? He ain't going to face nobody else. He's not going inter- to interact mm-hmm. with nobody else. So he never called him. So here, here I am. I done called around for an, another company to come and help move the rest, the of, rest of this furniture. The house stuff. The house stuff. That, you know, that I did not sell, mind you, you know, um, let me say that because when we moved down there, I had a whole house here that I took with me down there Mm -hmm. and, um, I ended up because we were quote unquote downsizing, um, I ended up selling a lot of my furniture, uh, to accommodate the apartment, um, that we were Mm -hmm. quote unquote living in. And so, um, the, the truck, the moving company that came down for that one, I had to because the, the pod they still didn't have enough a, a larger uh, uh, for me to put our right. furniture in. So mm-hmm. I had to just do a moving truck, and with the moving truck, I had to put it into a storage unit until ah, it was time. Yeah. So here he is. I told you to wait. I told you, look, these people Ooh. said you know they were working with us, but we had to be out by you a certain time because right. they had somebody yeah. else already ready, you know. So, and you didn't try to call them, and I was not right. calling them. It, that should it's no longer my responsibility, you. Right. you know. And so, you know, I move I move the stuff out. So now it's like, okay, um, where am I going to stay in the interim? Because the apartment uh, is not ready. Right. And um, uh, the house, you know, somebody else is already mm-hmm. on it. Mm-hmm. And so um, it, it's just like, okay, well, I can just stay where you're standing for right now. We right. can just we, get one right. of those extended stays right. for a period right. of time. Well, you in a hotel, um, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. So exactly. So I'm like, well, we can just get an extended stay, you mm-hmm. know. And the extended stay will be in between where you working and where I work okay. because now my commute is longer. Right. Remember, Louisiana is two and a half hours away from Mississippi, West Point. I mean Jackson, Mississippi. That, okay. So that means that's two and a half hours one way. So going and coming and home back. every day. Okay. So. It's like, um, we can just, you know, do midpoint. in between mm-hmm. midpoint from your job to my job was where he worked at. I think it was in Lafayette, Louisiana. Okay. And, um, we stayed in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Okay. you know? So, um, I'm like, if we do midway, mid, midway for me and where I felt comfortable was in Baton Rouge. Okay. Okay. And so, um, um, 
with that gap in between when the apartment was ready and I was moving out of the place, again, still had to find somewhere to live. Mm-hmm. So um, I went on ahead and I'm like, okay, um, I stayed in I stayed in a hotel like one night because it was just so much activity. So I stayed I stayed in Jackson, Mississippi that one okay. night, and then um, that next morning I got up and drove, Did you know, you uh, to Louisiana. And so um, when I get there, I did the extended stay. He didn't say not to do it. He let me breathe right. it. That's what that was okay. Be. Acceptable. So um, the next day, I didn't hear from him. So I'm like, okay. Two days, didn't hear from him. On that third day, I reached out to him. I'm like, okay, so what's up? You know? <laughs> and he was like, well, I'm just trying to think if I really want to do this or not. I'm like, you what? You, okay. Mm-hmm. So um, he was like, well, you know, I'm working and everything, and you know, it just makes it don't make sense for me to come. I'm like, look, I done moved all the way down here, you know, and y'all might think I was crazy, but again, uh, walking my shoes, right? Hey, walking my doing, shoes, right? And you, mm-hmm. okay, everybody has their own their exactly, own shoes right. that you walk in, exactly. so this this is mine. And so, um, uh, he ended up calling me, I think, the next day, and he was like, um, yeah, I was talking to one of my boys. And um, they just had a house built um, in Madison, Mississippi, which is where we were living in Madison, Mississippi. He said, uh, one of my boys, you know, he and his wife just had a house built and he works nice. And, you know, their house is the only house in the subdivision right now. And she's, you know, nervous at night. She can't sleep. So um, she wouldn't mind you coming over there and staying with her at night to keep her company. You know, they got, you know, you would have your own, you know, house, side of the house um, to yourself with your own bathroom, bedroom, mm-hmm. just everything, you know. And I was like, I don't know these people. Right. And at, <laughs> at this point, I don't trust you. somebody you knew. Right. I'm like, I don't trust you. You could be setting me up. You know oh, what I'm saying? Wow. I mean, that's what was yeah, in my, really, in my mind. Really, things have changed now. I don't really yeah. trust you like I did. I don't before. trust you. You're capable of anything. Mm-hmm. This, this is what I was thinking. And, you know, and so he was like, well, just think about it, Tasha. And, you know, I'm like, I'm not making any promises. Right. You know, so he called me back the next day. He was like, did you think about it? I was like, I just don't have a comfort level with it. I'm right. like, because I don't know them. He was like, well, you met them that time when we went, at, went to the gas station and they pulled up. I said, I don't, I don't, I don't know them either. because I'm, yeah. You know? It could have been a stranger that you just said hello exactly. to the gas station. I don't know them from Adam. Uh, you know, I'm like, I don't know them. You know, he was like, Tasha. I mean, it makes more sense because I'm, I'm not going to really be there. I'll come, I'll come. You know, on the days that I'm off, I'll come there and stay with you, you know. And so then, you know, we can just have couples nights and stuff like this or whatever he was saying. And so, you know, he talked to me so much where I said, you know what? i think about it. I said, I'll think about it. And so um, he was like, well, is it okay for me to just give um, his wife your phone number for her to call? You know. And so um, I said, you can. So um, I can't remember how long or a span of a time that day. Um, it took me um, before I, you know, did pick up the phone okay. and I did call. And when I called, she answered the phone. She's like, hello, Tasha. I mean, oh my goodness, sweet, beautiful person over the phone. Okay. I mean, you could hear it in her voice. And it was like instantly I, I was calm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, yeah. I was at ease. And she was like, when you coming? That's what she oh, said. Oh, okay. And I just started laughing. I'm like, well, I, you know, I need to talk to you a little bit. Right, you know, I, yeah, I need to know you know, what's no, going on. What? I need to understand. Lay you know, lay. Let, let us have a conversation, mm-hmm. you know. And she basically did repeat the same thing he said is that, you know, she, she and her husband work for the same um, company, Nissan in Mississippi. He works nights. She works days. New subdivision, mm-hmm. only house out there. She's not getting any sleep at night, you know, because she's not used to being in that house by herself, that night, area. Though. And she needs somebody to keep her company, and she would love for me to come down, you okay. know. So after we talked for a little while, I said, okay, I, I feel comfortable. Okay. I said, I'll come. So I packed up everything that I had taken with me for the extended stay, loaded my car up, and I drove two and a half hours to Mississippi that night. Got there back. By, <laughs> yep. Got there by 11 o'clock that night and um, went in, and she just welcomed, welcomed me with open arms. So she was giving me a tour, you know, of the house so I would know, like, mm-hmm. where everything was, was and everything. And so she took me... Uh, she showed me something and she's like, Do this look familiar? And I said, No. She was like, that, Calvin said y'all was getting rid of this. I was like, Oh, he did. Okay. So that was one thing. So then she took me to the patio area. So she was showing me the patio. Um, and she's like, Do this look familiar? And I looked at it. It was my patio furniture. Oh my goodness. I was steaming at she this point. He had given, sold, or however they got you some of your stuff. Mm-hmm. Some of your stuff. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
<laughs> and so I was steaming. And so I, 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 oh my God, I was, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm done with the tour now. You know, I didn't right. say that, but that's right. what I was yeah. feeling. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, I can't wait to get to my phone mm-hmm. to get to him. So when I got to my phone, once he finished giving me the tour and showing me everything, I got in that room, I closed that door. I called him. I said, you gave my stuff away. He paused. He was like, oh, oh, well, I thought we was getting rid of that. How did you think we was getting rid of stuff? What well, I was selling, I already sold. You know, what was still at the house was what was I was keeping. So stuff. what made you think that oh, I was getting rid of that? Goodness. No, you did that on purpose, you know. And so um, I hung up on him at that particular time. And so... Um, from there the next morning, you know, I did tell her, I said, you know, I said, I apologize if I was kind of, you know, a little mm-hmm. um, funny style at night. I'm like, but I didn't know that he had given some of my things away. Uh-huh. And she was like, oh, you didn't know? She said, because when we went over to the house, apparently he had them to come over to the house after I left to go to work. You know, and so he, she said, he basically just said, just, you know, look whatever y'all want. Look, yeah. Look at what you want. Oh, yep. my goodness. Yep. Look and pick, you know. And so, you know, she said that, she said she kept, they kept asking, this is really nice. Are you sure? And she said, he was just like, yep, you know, if you want it, you can take it. You know. Oh, so she goodness. wanted to give it back to me. And I was like, no, oh, because no. for me to stay with them, they allowed me to stay with them rent free. Didn't have to pay for anything. Oh, wow. Because I was doing them a favor of staying there to, to keep, keep her company. So they would not accept anything from me. Oh. So with me, I didn't feel yeah. like, you know, yeah. so I'm like, okay, so I would cook, you know, oh, I would just really? do stuff. Yeah, okay. I'm like, I'm going to pay you in some right. way. Right. Okay. Yeah, you know, so for me. And it was a nice, comfortable, safe space was, for you also. Look, Tyronica and Moselle Howard, <laughs> thank you. Because that husband and wife team kept me from being homeless. And I have to say that. That was the beginning of my homeless experience. Oh, wow. It was an experience that I'll never, ever forget. And I owe them like never before. Because, again, like I said, they allowed me to come stay with them. And they allowed me to save my money. Whereas I didn't have to spend money on anything. And Mm. for that, I would ever be indebted to them. Because they really... (laughs) Thank God once again for grace and for favor. We never know what some folks go through. <laughs> yep, I didn't have to leave when I left. I could have stayed there, but because of him, that's the reason that I ended up going going ahead and moving to Louisiana because my stuff was already there with the one pod that had gone. Oh. You know, so it was just too much money that was being spent. Arrangements has already been made, so it's like I'm not into losing money that I don't have. Mm-hmm. So I went ahead and I moved forward, you know, with it and got to Louisiana. But when I get there, when it's time to move into the apartment, he shows up with his own little moving truck because he's moving somewhere else. So I'm like, are you serious? So I had y'all a- still not on the same page, really. It's, you're on the same page, but in reality. Y'all moving in two different directions. Mm-hmm. You got a whole different plan. Mm-hmm. And at this point, I'm like, are you praying? Because you can't be praying. You cannot be praying and God is telling you. And I wasn't trying to put myself on a pedestal, but I know the woman of God that I am. And at the end of the day, if God bless you with a good thing, why would you on God's green earth mess that up for whatever it is that you got going on? And I just kept asking him, was he praying? And he could never give me an answer. But he's being real mean and nasty and he's getting his stuff and he's putting it on his little his little U-Haul truck or whatever. And so eventually he left. He got his stuff and he left. So I was in this apartment community by myself in a place that I was not familiar with at all. That was on a Saturday. That following Sunday morning, here, here he comes calling me. And he was saying, I apologize. He was like, I thought about everything that you said. And he's like, I do want our marriage to work. And he was like, so um, I want us to go ahead and try. I'm like, so you're saying that to say what? You're saying that to say that you're going to come here? Or or what are you saying? He was like, yes, I'm coming here. So I said, okay, I'll see you when you get here. So he came. But then when he came, he's moving stuff in the spare bedroom. And not the bedroom that should have been for yeah. us. You know, so I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, there's enough room in here. He's like, well, you know, I'll just go ahead and put my stuff in here. It's not a biggie, okay? But then he was sleeping in the spare bedroom, okay? So I was like, okay, no. Okay, right. This is not a marriage. Right. It's just not working out. You know, it's just not happening. You know, and you walking around here locking doors. Like, I don't lock doors oh, in my home. Right. You know? Not with my mate. <laughs> yeah, not with my mate. You locking the spare bedroom because the spare bedroom had a, its own a bathroom that was off of the you know living mm-hmm. the dining room area. So he's locking both doors. I'm like, what are you locking doors for? You know, what is going on? You know? And so um I just never forget this one particular night I was I was having shortness of breath 
and I was hurting in my chest area and I got I was afraid and so I finally got up and I was going to tell him that I wasn't feeling good and I needed to go to the hospital mm-hmm. and I heard him say something about Cialis he was on the phone and I was like Cialis oh the pills okay okay he getting it in order for you so my health was more important to me having a conversation with him about Cialis. So I said to him, I don't feel good. I'm hurting and I'm having swelling to broth. I need to go to the hospital. So he did take me to the hospital. Um, they, you know, checked, um, you out. checked me out and everything and couldn't find anything wrong. Um, so from there, I ended up, you know, back at home and I didn't go to work that next day. Um, so after then, it just it was just like, passing by you know that was it at this point you know there was just really no exchange of anything yeah, at this point mm-hmm. yes and at this point I was ready for him to go okay and so I never forget one day he um he had sent me some flowers at work two different times same day big bouquet of roses and I'm like is he trying to reconcile like what's going oh, okay. on you know I didn't know what was going on you know so I had I had uh, called him and I said, thank you for what? Nasty tone. I'm like, did you send me flowers? You know, because I'm like, like, oh no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. You didn't send me any flowers? Yeah, I sent them. I'm like, I'm I'm not understanding, but what's what's the attitude for then? You know? Mm -hmm. And he was just like, I mean, I I just sent them. No reason. You know? So, Oh wow! Yeah, you're saying thank you, and you can't even. Okay, yeah, yeah, you know, and so, um, you know, there's a lot of women at at work, and you know, Mississippi, everybody know everybody. So, um, I'll never forget. He said to me this one night, I got home. He says to me, "Yeah, um, you know, I had went to this funeral, and um, oh, I forgot, I left that out. He did get a job at a funeral home at one time. So, um." He, he was at this funeral and uh, this lady had came up to him and told him that he looked real nice in his, his um, suit and everything. And so he said he was like, thank you. And he said she was like, um, yeah, um, I would like to get to know you a little bit better or something like that. He said, mm-hmm. she said or whatever. And so he said, he said to her, um, you know, I'm a married man, you know, is what he said. He said to her and, and he said, she then said, oh, I know, I know who your wife is. Oh, wow. <gasps> Women. Mm-hmm. 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 So, you know, now um, he's like, um, and he was like, you know who my wife is? And supposedly she said, yeah, because we work, we work for the same company. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So now, I'm like, we work for the same company. I'm like, what does she look like? Right. I'm who like, is she now? Now I got to yeah. find her. Yeah, I'm like, describe her to me. He's like, well, I don't know. I'm like, you don't know? I'm like, long hair, short hair, weed, dark skin, mm-hmm. light skin, short, tall, I mean, what? Right. I don't know. I'm like, well, what does she look like? He said she looked like a booger wolf. I'm like, okay. So, I don't know what that I, looks like. I was like. about to say, what's a booger wolf? Yes. I've I never heard of that, that term before. Yes. I don't know what that looks like. I have, but it just mean, it can mean anything. You, oh, I'm, okay. Okay. Well. It's, it's also describe something ugly. Okay. okay. Like okay. a monster or something. They call it a booger wolf. Okay. Well, supposedly she looked like a booger wolf. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so, um... Okay, I didn't know who the I didn't know what a book wolf looked like. You so know. you didn't know who to look so at. I didn't know who to look at. Yeah, I didn't know. And so, but what I do know <laughs> is is that I started feeling uncomfortable because now every woman that walks past my office looking, you wonder. I is wonder. That the book wolf? Yes, and so now now I'm like putting myself in a position to defend myself. So right. it's like, you know, right. I got oh, like yeah, a strong you gotta, look. Mm-hmm, like I'm like, mm-hmm. don't come this way. Right. You know, whatever it is, don't come this way. So I, I have more of an aggressive tone now, now. to my position and posture. Because mm-hmm. oh, wow. it's like, don't come for me. You so know? now that's beginning to change you, your, exactly. your persona, what you exactly. are normally. Exactly. I'm on edge all the time now because I don't know what's what, mm-hmm. you know. And so um, what I ended up coming to terms with myself is that it wasn't a booger wolf. What it was is that he was hitting on somebody oh. and that somebody let him know I work with your I wife. Know your Leave wife. me alone. Uh-huh. Okay. And so he he called himself trying to beat that person to the punch. Okay. Before they, they came and you. told me. But nobody uh-huh. ever came and told me anything. Okay. That's my take right. on what happened. Which, which I'm I'm led to believe that so. because of his behavior. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And so, um, <laughs> yeah. Just like he was trying to turn the friends to say how you were doing something mm-hmm. wrong mm-hmm. first. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, you know. And so, um, it, I mean, like I said, it just got it just got horrible, and it, it got to a place where. Um, it was just like I want a piece in my home, and so one day I, I remember him calling me. And he said, um, "Yeah, uh, we need to talk." And I'm like, "Talk about what?" I was at work. Mm-hmm. I'm like, "Talk about what work?" I mean, what? And he was like, "I'm just trying to f- figure out if you know if I should stay or if I should leave." I'm like, "If you should stay or if you should leave, yeah." I mean, I mean, I don't even know if there's anything here for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Okay, uh, you you want to talk to me about this right now while I'm at work?" <laughs> <laughs> can we? Can you wait till I get yeah, home? Right. Can this be right? Yeah. You know. And so, um, he uh, he was like, I mean, I guess. And so when I get home, um, he was sitting in, in in the living room waiting for me. So I sit down. So I'm his, his your world has had this conversation. Yeah. So he just sitting there and he's like, um, yeah, I, I you know I just been sitting here all day trying to just think. And I you know I just don't I just don't know I don't ha- I can't think of a reason that I should stay. You know, and I'm like, okay. Um, okay, well, I don't know what to tell you. You know, I'm like, because at the end of the day, a lot has taken place wow. in this marriage, mm-hmm. and uh, you have done a lot. And I'm like, at this point, I, I don't beg, I don't plead, right. and if you, you got to do, you know, like what's best for you. Right. And so um, he he said. Um, I mean, and then Natasha. When when was the last time? I mean, everything oh. with attitude. Well, I mean, when was the last time we were intimate with each other? I said, don't you start uh, with that. Don't you because play that you game already with me. lied to me. Right. You already lied to me. You didn't tell me you had an issue up right. front. You know. So and I, and then tell myself. I mean, when was the last time I had an orgasm? I'm like, look. You had orgasms. I said, you have had orgasms. Don't say that you haven't had orgasms. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but whatever your issue is, that's the reason you have it. Don't try to put that on me because you know you have an issue, you know. And so um, he said, well, I mean, this is is what I'm saying. This is why I just don't think it's going to work. I'm like, no, it's not going to work, you know. I'm like, but you do what you feel you need to do. Anyway, a couple of days later, we had that conversation on July 11th of 2017. Okay. Um, I come home early from work on July 13th of 2017. He was moving. Oh, okay. Hadn't told, hadn't said, okay, I made my decision. I'm right. I'm, th- I'm gone. I'm yeah. And so when I went in the room, I looked, he had the majority of his, his things gone. He just had a few things left there. So I went through the things that was there, you know, to see what was what. And I found this 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 tablet, and it was a tablet, like uh, that he had wrote certain diagnoses down okay. that could have come from someone receiving counseling. Okay. You know, and I actually still have it on my phone because I took pictures ah. of it. Yes. And so, um, and it was talking about a person um, that has a, a a narcissist. How you say that word? Oh, narcissistic. Behavior, mm-hmm. yes, the mm-hmm. characteristics of that kind of a person. Okay. As I'm reading this, I'm like, Oh my god, it's, it's him! Oh, it's him! I have it, I can show y'all on my phone. <laughs> um, and I'm like, This is what I've been dealing with. Wow, you know, Was he attempting to diagnose himself, maybe in a way to get better, or I don't think so because he always tried to put the blame on me for everything. Whatever he was doing, he flipped it as if it was me. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing was ever his fault. Mm -hmm. Nothing was ever his fault. You know, um, so, you you know, at the end of the day, when I saw that, I'm like, yeah, yeah, he needs to be gone. Uh So I called him. I can't remember if I called him or texted him, but I'm like, when are you coming to get the rest of your things? Okay. You know, and he was like, I'll be there tomorrow, you know, at 10 o'clock. I said, call before you come. Cause I do not want you to enter my home unless I'm there. Okay. You know, so he was like, no problem. So 10 o'clock came the next day. He wasn't there. That whole day, you know, went by nothing. So that next morning I said, um, you were supposed to be here yesterday at 10. I have not heard from you. When are you coming to get the rest of your things? He was like, I'm on my way now. So about an hour later, he pulls up with one of his friends from here from Michigan. Oh, 
his friend from Michigan came down there. I, mean, I don't know how, Why, what whatever. kind of arrangements, mm-hmm. whatever. But with his truck, and they had rented a, what do you call it? Something. Mm-hmm. Oh, the trailer, the U-Haul mm-hmm. thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so he came in, didn't speak to me, so I didn't speak to him. Really? I didn't do anything. Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. Didn't, count, didn't say a word about okay. nothing. His friend didn't even speak. So it's obvious he didn't told him. Right, you know, the something. negative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I didn't bother to speak. Oh, at this yeah. point, it's like, you, mm-hmm. like, you, stuff, you yeah. were ready to be done. Yeah. Then. I'm like, y'all should know better. So I'm just like, it is what it is. So um, he gets, you know, he's moving all of his things or whatever. And so he says to me, um, Calvin says, do you mind if I take this blow up bed? I was like, nope, you can have it. You know, so he took the blow-up bed, and then that was it. I closed the door, and that was it. I had had not seen him, and have not seen him since July thirteenth, twenty seventeen. Wow. So yep. Two years later. So, um, I was my mother and my brother were the only two who I ended up telling a little bit mm-hmm. to what was okay in reference to where I was, you know, and where I was living and everything. And they were like, Tasha, you in a place? You don't know anybody. You're too far from everybody. You need to come back home. Come here. back home. Mm-hmm. You need to come back home. And I was like, um, I'm, I wasn't too sure. Even my good friend, she's like, Tasha, you need to just come back home. And I still wasn't feeling it. But one day, our our bishop, the one who married us, he had called me. It was on a Monday morning, and I saw, you know, caller ID. I'm like, I answered the phone. I was like, Hey, bishop. And he said, hey, daughter. He was like, um, yeah, I'm calling because he said, I saw Calvin in church yesterday. And she said, he said, when I saw him, he said, he said something that was disturbing to me. He said, and I, you know, I didn't get a chance to really talk to him because I had an engagement that evening. But he, but he said, before I talked to him, I wanted to call and talk to you to see what's going on. So I paused and I just said, it's a lot. I said, it's a lot. And so. Your bishop called, you'd be like, uh-oh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep, and so, you know, I told him everything, you know, and I told him, I said, because I, I wasn't anticipating him calling, you know, and I felt like I was just jumping around in my story mm-hmm. in reference to telling him, you know, everything that had taken it's place, and, and, and so he was like, no, he said, you, he said, what he, he told me, he said, no, he said, actually, you gave me a clear picture of what's going on, okay. you know, he said, so, um, he said, so how do you feel about um, coming back to Michigan? And I said, I don't. I said, because I haven't had this much peace since he's been gone that I have right now. And I said, I really just don't want to even disturb it. I said, I just want to sit still. Because coming back to the explanation of why you back and even having to step through what you've been through and being back. Can this break up the peace? Because you didn't have to relive it versus I'm just, I'm cruising. I'm getting over it, but going back is a relation of okay. Wow. But it was so I have been going through so much that I mean it was just like I have never been in a place where my whole life was just twisted around, you know. I mean I was just literally, literally shaking. And it was like every day, every day I was coming home with an attitude, every day, every day it was something, every day it was just argument. I mean it was just something. something. And it was just like I have never lived like that. A lifestyle of peace. And happiness, you know, calmness is what I've always lived. But with this man, it was like my life was in an uproar. You know how they say a woman is a nagging woman is, mm-hmm. is, is, oh. is yeah. Mm-hmm. He was a nagging man. I mean, it was just like always. It was like he was trying to start arguments and create arguments. It was just always something. It was just like, you know. So when he left, I finally had a chance to just be still. Mm-hmm. You know, and then at that time, um, the, you know, one of the reasons I had moved to Mississippi was because the job that I had here in Michigan, um, the position was eliminated. And so in Mississippi, Missis- the, the job that I was hired for, um, it wasn't what was communicated to me. And so I ended up losing versus making money down there. And so I had to eventually make a decision for myself. If I was going to stay there and continue to lose or, you know, come back where I know the opportunities are better um, and get myself back on my feet. But even with that, I still wasn't ready right away because, again, I had just gone through so much and I just needed some time. Right. You had to get back to yourself because, Mm -hmm. again, you were like being with everything you were going through and hoping that stuff would work out. So you just topsy turvy and Mm -hmm. everything. And Mm -hmm. now he's gone. Mm -hmm. And. Not only is he's gone, you are at a position in a point now where the decision was we're not working. Mm-hmm. So now you you gotta now work 
you know, in that sphere mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, um, you know, so when he when the bishop asked me, he's like, I know you probably don't want, want this. He's like, but how do you feel about coming to Michigan? And I was like, mm, I said, I'm good right now. I'm like, I don't think about coming back to Michigan. I'm good where I am. I got peace right now. And I just, you know, I just want to sit still. So he's like, okay. He's like, well, you know, just think about it. You just think about it. Just pray about it, you know. And so after I hung up the phone with him, because he also told me, he said, I'm going to talk to Calvin. And he said, you know, um, you know, he said, I don't know when I'm going to be able to do it because I'm kind of busy. But he said, I'll talk to him. And I said, okay. So got for the phone with him. Some time went by. And, you know, later on that day, just reflecting back on all the conversations that I had about coming back to Michigan. And then the Holy Spirit started tugging on me as well, you know. And it's just like every conversation that, that my mom had, my brother had, even my good friend Kenyatta had with me about why I need to move back to Michigan. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was just coming through. Coming. And then with the bishop, you know, calling me and saying what he said to me, that was just like the icing on the cake. Uh-huh. So, and yeah, exactly. So it didn't take me long to make that decision on, okay, I need to come back oh, to Michigan. Okay. So I called my bishop back. No, I text him. I text him. I texted him and I said, I'm coming home. And he texted me back and he said, great, don't tell Calvin. Let me talk to him first. Okay. And then I will get back with you. Okay. 